So, welcome back. I'm not quite sure that that was enough time for a cigarette, um, unless you have one by your side. So if you've stuck around with us, um, thank you for doing so. So we can, we can continue on uh, with the next uh, event on our program, uh, which we have another debate now shifting topic slightly. So we've covered the aspects about inclusivity and participation and who does e-commerce really uh, benefit? And we want to move this on to the sustainability debate. So to help us run this, we've uh, joined with our uh, sister UN agency, uh, UNEP, and I have the great pleasure of handing over uh, the moderation of this panel to uh, Daniel Liebetegger, who is Consumer Information and Echo Labels Consultant at the United Nations Environment Programme. Daniela, over to you. Thank you, James. Good morning, good day, and good evening, everyone, depending where you're sitting today. I'm really, really excited to be here today. And thanks to James and the whole Ecom Connect team uh, for making you a part of this event. And um, the discussion today on how to make marketplaces um, uh, drive eventual, environmental, social, and economic sustainability. Um, I think by now it is it's actually unnecessary to say that e commerce platforms are taking a more and more important place in our shopping habits and that the recent pandemic has actually just uh, ex accelerated this development. Um, on the other side, we are told every day that we need to consume less, more responsibly, and that consumers want to know more about the products they buy and the impact these products actually have on the environment. So today's discussion will evolve around um, how marketplaces can um, actually reply to increase demand for sustainable products, the opportunities, what also, what also challenges in terms of transparency with the production of these, of these goods, and um, also to how to best communicate sustainability attributes to consumers. Um, we will also touch upon how marketplaces in general can contribute to environmental sustainability and uh, the promotion of, uh, of more sustainable and locally sourced uh, goods. Um, to discuss this, um, we have invited uh, three really great speakers who will share their insights and uh, experience with us today. I will kick off actually the debate with a presentation given by Jan Christian Polonia, who is um, the head of sustainable consumption at Adelphi. Um, Adelphi is a German think do tank and uh, public policy consultancy. Um, I, I do this on, on, on a personal note. So Adelphi is currently working on the guidelines for the uh, e-commerce sector on how best to communicate product sustainability to consumers. Um, this is actually a UNF funded project and uh, he, will, uh, he will shortly uh, tell us more about um, our preliminary findings. Then thereafter, we will have our roundtable discussion together with uh, Francis uh, Martins, who is the, govern uh, the government relations director at Mercado Livre Brazil. Um, Mercado Livre being one of the leading uh, marketplaces in Latin America. Uh, Francois will uh, surely share with us uh, their work on sustainability. Um, Oh, I just see actually the, I'm really, really sorry for that. I just see the message that unfortunately Francis is unable to join us today. So um, I'm really sorry to, to hear that. I hope he's doing well. So then um, in this case, it's going to be um, the discussion then um, with uh, Jan Christian and with uh, joined by Kuma uh, Ranesh the Chief Corporate of, uh, Affairs Officer at uh, Flipkart India, um, who will surely tell us a bit more about the role on, e on, uh, on, on an e-commerce platform um, and how it can also um, uh, connect with local communities. Um, also, I would like to remind you, please send us your questions to the, panel, uh, to the panelists through our chat, and we will try to answer many of, as many of, as, of them as possible. So now let's uh, start and I'm handing over to Jan Christian for his presentation. So 
All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Daniela, for this uh, kind introduction. And also thanks uh, a lot to the organizers of this uh, event. I just saw the, the last minutes of the last debate, and I think it, it already gave a good impression that there is a lively audience here among us. So I'm really looking forward to the discussions that we are going to have. Um, I hope uh, you can see my, my presentation. I shared my screen right now. Yes. Chris, you're nodding, that's that's a good sign. All right, so then I start straight away. Um, as uh, Daniela already um, mentioned, so today I will provide an overview on the guidelines for providing product sustainability information in e-commerce, um, which are not published yet. So today you will have the opportunity to get a sneak preview on the guidelines um, and um, yeah, for the publication, you have to be patient a little bit. We will planning to publish them at the end of November. So that's what you're learning today is like, yeah, it's really like a developed uh, draft, um, um, which we also, which also already underwent some um, consultation processes. Um, so it will um, more or less look like what you will see today. Okay, so then I jump to the next slide. Yeah, um, Daniela already mentioned that we are based in Berlin, that we are an independent uh, think tank and public policy consultancy. So I will jump over this. Thanks, uh, Daniela, already for this introduction on Adelphi. And I will start uh, straight away with the challenge that we were facing. Um, last year, um, oh no, this year, sorry, um, the um, European Commission did um, a website screening, and that's what they call like a, a website sweep um, for greenwashing. They are already doing this for other topics, but this year was the first time they did it uh, for greenwashing. And um, one of the results, or like one of the staggering results, is that 42% of the websites they analyzed, they found uh, claims um, on um, that were exaggerated, false, or even deceptive, and uh, could qualify as unfair commercial practices under EU rules concerning the topic of uh, sustainability, and yeah, could fall like into this um, um, topic of uh, greenwashing. And um, so we are already were aware of this problem. I think this uh, really boils it down to, to kind of like an interesting study and an interesting analysis. And um, so we asked the question, okay, how can we then actually enable sustainable consumer choices in the e-commerce context? So that is the challenge that we started with. And um, we developed this into a new project. So um, together with the uh, working group one from the consumer information program of the One Planet Network, we started developing this new project um, in develop, um, for, um, which is called the guidelines for providing product sustainability information in e-commerce. And the idea is to develop specific guidance for e-commerce platforms to improve their product related uh, sustainability information towards consumers. Um, we do not have to start uh, from scratch because uh, a couple of years uh, ago in 2017, um, we I've already been part of that project. We uh, developed the guidelines for provi providing product sustainability information. So in general, like for offline, online shopping and so on. Um, and um, But we thought like that the online world the, or the e-commerce e setting is, yeah, it's, it's a bit, special um, and we and, and in the years back like we did not emphasize this sector and it was also not that big at that time so we thought like okay it's a good idea to really provide guidance how you can actually translate those 10 principles for consumer information um, into the online world and uh, so that you get an idea what are the principles that you can find in those guidelines for providing product sustainability information I will give you a, a quick overview. So um, in this um, in multi-stakeholder process, together with a working group like of um, almost 40 organizations, international organizations, we develop those fundamental principles for um, sustainability information that include uh, reliability, uh, relevance, clarity, transparency, and accessibility. And on the other hand, we also developed a set of aspirational principles, which covered the three dimensions of uh, sustainability, a multi-channel innovative approach, behavior change and longer term impact, collaboration and comparability. So the idea now with our current project is to develop 
like a specific guidance for those 10 principles. And for each of the principles, we um, already developed um, a two pager where we describe the problem, the challenges, and um, also provide guidance. Yeah, how we, can you ensure this principle in the online context? And um, yeah, what, what can you do? What should you not do? And so on. And now I will give you an overview on the five uh, fundamental principles. So you get an idea what we are talking about and um, yeah, what direction we are going with our guidance. Um, we um, yeah, did a desktop analysis uh, first. So we looked at several um, e-commerce platforms, um, also looked where what that was available at studies and so on. But we also talked to the target group of our guidance and we uh, conducted several interviews with the leading e-commerce platforms. And um, to boil it down, like all of them kind of said like, yeah, demand for um, sustainability information is on the rise, uh, more and more customers are demanding it. Um, the um, uh, e-commerce platforms are already starting um, working on this issue, but most of them, if they have already launched something, they are more or less in pilot phases or they're still in the development phase um, and they are kind of doing trial and error. So um, what we saw like, okay, there is a huge difference um, between the reliability. So how they check the reliability, they also have, um, have different focus areas and so on. And also what we learned from those interviews was that there is a request for a standardized uh, information and also guidance. Okay, challenge accepted. Um, so we are now developed um, guidance for the principles and um, for the principle of uh, reliability, so how you can ensure this, um, we propose that uh, the e-commerce platforms uh, must take responsibility for the information that is published on their websites, including the claims that are also made by the sellers, so not only by themselves, but also by the sellers. And um, they also must ensure a certain quality level for all sustainability information. And um, how can you ensure this? Like, well, you need to provide guidance to your sellers. So if it's not in your control, you need to provide the guidance to your sellers. Um, a starting point could be uh, the general guidelines for providing product sustainability information. And um, what's also really an important point, and we are already discussing this um, in another project because I'm also um, leading the work of the um, help desk for the EU eco label. Um, we um, need to kind of request the, the platforms that they um, verify the labels that are displayed on their platforms. So um, that's not trivial. Actually, it can be quite complicated because um, you need a common um, identifier. So you need to compare databases between the, like the product databases of the e-commerce platforms with the databases of the labeling organizations, um, you need to find them in both databases like an identification code, like an EAN number or a GTIN number or something like this. Um, so you can yeah, automatically compare this and verify that the label can be displayed on your e-commerce platform. Let's jump to the next principle. Um, so this is just a, a short like dive into each of the principles um, on the, um, yeah, the two pages, you actually will find more guidance, um, but this is just an overview. So how to ensure relevance in an e-commerce setting? Well, first uh, e-commerce platforms must identify sustainability hotspots because they must identify what's actually relevant for the product in terms of uh, sustainability. Um, they also uh, should ensure uh, that the filter options actually lead consumers um, to really sustainable products and not only products that might have like a little um, sustainability attribute connected to, but um, yeah, overall it's actually not better um, than um, a conventional product. Well, how can you ensure this principle? Um, check whether highlighted claims are addressing hotspots of the product. This is also not trivial because um, hotspots analysis, it can be really um, demanding and it, it, it can be a, a complicated uh, process. So actually what would be needed for that would also be like to yeah, gather an overview on what are the hotspots um, based on like preliminary analysis. And also what this is something like 
what would be actually needed, I think like a database where you can easily find this information. Um, because now you don't find it in one place, you always have to look from one database to another or to look at um, different studies and so on. Um, and of course, how could you also ensure this principle? Um, you need to develop and apply strong criteria for the sustainability uh, filters and also the um, product descriptions that are given. How can you ensure clarity in an e-commerce setting? Well, the easy way, if that's available, um, um, can be um, third-party verified eco-labels, or if its products are not labeled, um, or this is no labeling is available for a certain product category, then it needs to be backed up by a scientifically um, accepted uh, methodology. Um, but what's also really important in terms of clarity is that you provide uh, information on the limits of the claim that is given. Be really precise about it, because um, sometimes you can have like, let's say you have like one eco label on the website, and then you have several products, but it's only attached to one product, and this would be misleading. Um, but also an important point, how could you ensure this, is um, that you develop a selection criteria for qualifying labels and qualifying methods that I accepted. Um, display the information where it's needed and when it's needed, so close to the product, and also during the several steps of the customer journey, including the last step, the, the point of sale. Um, so when the information is actually needed. And yeah, be really concise and explicit with the sustainability information. How can you ensure transparency in an e-commerce setting? Well, you must indicate the provider of the information um, as well as its source of information. You must provide sufficient information to back up all relevant sustainability aspects of a product. We know that it can also be difficult and challenging. Um, but so how can you ensure this? Like, okay, the best way would be that you already require um, the information from your suppliers at the point of procurement, so already before it's sold. And this can also be difficult even if a product is labeled because this um, information might not be uh, available because it's only available to the competent bodies because it's confidential. So this can also be a, a tricky issue. So you have to define like what, what you present and what you make transparent, but yeah, it should cover like the whole supply chain and um, yeah, really be accessible also for the consumers. Um, and yeah, this comes, the next point already comes to the point of um, accessibility. So um, you should provide transparency in various levels or various steps because yeah, the information must be kind of digestible for the consumer. Um, so what you can, how you can do this is that you provide like layered information so that you kind of have like general information and like the, the main information on sustainability at a first glance, but then provide options to, to dig deeper so that the consumers can like look into it, verify it for themselves and uh, so on. And uh, yeah, how could you do this? Like you should include it already in product previews, like a first glance on the sustainability aspects of a product, um, guide consumers by using dedicated sustainable, sustainable product collections and um, yeah, have a designated landing page for sustainability um, products or a sustainability information because what we also found out that it's really difficult for consumers to find sustainable products even if they are in on the platform and even if they are indicated so those are the fundamental principles and let's like have a quick look on the aspirational principles um so when it comes to the three dimensions of sustainability um, we ask like to tell the whole sustainability uh, story, so not only on one aspect, of course, look at the most important ones, but also um, look at, for instance, not only the environmental aspects, but also at the social impacts of the products, for instance. Um, when you look at behavior change and longer term impact, Impacts, um, incentivize sustainable consumption options, so um, really kind of bring the sustainable products to the consumer, also to those who are not looking into it, um, and yeah, provide them the information or give them the nudge that an, another way of consuming is possible. Um, Multi-channel and innovative approach, 
Well, it could be, for instance, also related to behavior change, apply gamification approaches. There is already some really interesting things um, happening also in the, in the offline uh, commerce, so in the, in the stationary retail, like when it comes to loyalty cards and how you could use this information gathered also to kind of um, approach consumers um, and kind of nudge them into more sustainable consumption habits. Um, but just by that. Um, and when you look at the, the principle of collaboration, well, we uh, recommend to team up with uh, trustworthy partners and also show it um, on the website. Like that's like in the online world, you can really kind of provide those information easily, maybe more easily than in the stationary uh, retail. Um, and um, another thing which is really kind of specific for the for the e-commerce uh, world is that you can kind of provide the, the consumers the, the possibility to compare products really, like compare the attributes of the products um, side by side. And um, actually you need to have this function and not only for the price or for the dimensions of the product, but also for the sustainability attributes. So you can easily compare in the different fields of sustainability where you have the information available, let's say in terms of energy consumption, for instance, or in terms of carbon footprint, if you have the data available so that the consumer can um, yeah, do this comparisons by themselves side by side, but of course, inform the consumer also on the limits of the claims and um, also on the limitations of the information that is given. So be transparent about it. I'm coming now to the end of my presentation. Um, so um, what are the next steps in our project? Um, so we plan to finalize the guidance in November and we will already, uh, and we will present um, the guidelines um, in two global webinars. Um, I think my colleague um, now will also post the links for those two uh, webinars. So the first uh, webinar will take place at the 22nd of November um, at 10 a.m. Central European time. Um, and the same webinar, but for another time zone. Um, so um, it will take place on Tuesday, the 23rd of November at 4 p.m. Central European time. Um, if you have any questions, of course, you could ask questions already during this uh, event today. Um, but um, if you want to contact us, you also find the contact information. So it's CISCP at UN.org. You will reach Daniela and Niels there from the One Planet Network. They run the coordination desk there and of the Consumer Information Program. And you could also get directly in touch um, with me um, and Johanna as well. So polania at adelphi.de is um, my contact. And thank you for your attention. And um, yeah, really looking forward to the discussions now. So I'm handing back to you, Daniela. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Jan Christian, um, for this really interesting first sneak preview on the new guidelines for e-commerce. Um, yeah, let's uh, start now with the discussion. And uh, I will I will hand over to Ranesh. And uh, I actually have seen that in September, you passed the milestone of over 75% of your sellers, um, seller partners using sustainable packaging. So can you tell us a little bit more how e-commerce can really be sustainable and in which other ways um, can it create a positive contribution to the sustainable development goals? Uh, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I think this is a, uh, this is a great platform and uh, really appreciate your invite for this. I think one of the, one of the very early comments that I want to make about, about e-commerce in India first is just to give a broader, a little bit of context to this. In India, retail market is almost $900 billion, right? Which is uh, mostly run by mom and pop Kirana stores, uh, we call them in India. E-commerce is only a very small, uh, it is between four to five, uh, four to five percent of the overall retail in, in, in India. So it's a very tiny uh, sort of market right now. But having said that, I think the key piece uh, as, as I look at e-commerce is it's a marketplace by design. Government of India has a, a, has a policy on foreign, foreign direct investment, which allows e-commerce only to be a marketplace. So it cannot own inventory. It has to work with the sellers of all kinds, smaller, larger, 
artisans, hinterland, you know, small businesses in the hinterland who never had market access and bring them onto the marketplace uh, and obviously expand uh, the e-commerce uh, into the consumer space because consumer, as we see, while connectivity is very large in India, I think people are only getting familiarization with e-commerce now. And, and especially when the pandemic, uh, especially in the pandemic time, I think there has been more propensity to see how they can go online and buy. So from that perspective, when I look at uh, that context is important that it's a very small market, but uh, it's an extremely relevant question as you, as, as you sort of mentioned. It has brought in you know, uh, a lot of new age thinking of how the uh, sustainable development goals can be truly implemented you know, for each of the SDGs. And I can go on to many of them, but I will focus primarily on Two, uh, which I think is also important from the perspective when I look at like an emerging market like India, where e-commerce is only very at the beginning of uh, very almost like a day one right now. And all of us are making effort in terms of how can we create that awareness among consumers? How can we bring small businesses online? Uh, they may need a lot of handholding. If I give you an example of e-commerce ecosystem in India, it is expected to create almost 1.5 million employment opportunities by 2021, by end of this year, led primarily by logistics and warehousing sector, bringing small businesses who are operating in a very small uh, geography and bringing them a big a sort of pan-India market access. And growing forward, I think a lot of them will actually become part of the global supply chain. So, uh, uh, so currently, for example, if I give my example of Flipkart uh, alone, and uh, there are several other players who are operating in India, we have almost 375,000 small businesses. Majority of them are very small, very tiny. We have almost 700,000 small artisans who never had market access to a larger market. But today, thanks to e-commerce, they have an opportunity to grow their business. They have an opportunity to prosper. They have an opportunity to... Uh, you know, uh, become more efficient, create more jobs uh, at, at, at a local level. So the, clearly the possibility which uh, e-commerce bring in using technology to democratize access to opportunities, I think is immense, which I think is one of the bigger goals uh, from an SDG perspective. Similarly, if I sort of uh, uh, focus on another one, and I know, I, as I mentioned, I can focus on several of them, but I think uh, another key one is the climate action. As you also pointed out, uh, as business expands, uh, we in a supply chain, uh, which is sort of supporting through warehouse and logistics, in our own supply chain, we have reduced plastic completely. So, you know, you will not find a package uh, which Flipkart sends, which have plastic in it. Similarly, we are focusing on electric vehicles on the ground. So that last mile, uh, last mile is ex actually accessed by the electric vehicle. We are making sure that our warehouses are uh, driven by renewable energy, water positive. Uh, but obviously, it's a very early stage uh, from, the, from the aggregating action. But I think the key piece, as I, as I mentioned about this one, is in India, I think this, is, this also becomes a little easier because all of us are very accustomed to uh, reusing products. And if you look at the green index, I think India is up significantly high uh, at this point. So my sense, while e-commerce is still very new in, in, in India, but opportunity it is creating not just from an employment perspective, giving market access to small businesses, but also making sure that right in the beginning, the overall construct of sustainability is very well embedded into the whole system. Happy to take your question subsequently on this one, Daniela. Okay, thanks so much. Um, I will now um, hand over to uh, Jan Christian. Uh, Jan Christian, we have heard from uh, um, Anish some really good examples on on how e-commerce can, uh, can contribute actually to sustainability and uh, to the SDGs. Um, my question to you now is in our effort to push uh, for more sustainable consumption in the e-commerce sector, what is actually the role of the UN, uh, UNF guidelines and how should they be implemented? Well, I think one important point um, concerning the role of those guidelines is that we contribute to a standardized way of providing uh, information. Because when we look at the e-commerce platforms and also on the various sellers, on the hundreds and thousands millions of sellers, um, we um, 
have to make it also easier for them. So for instance, if sellers are operating on different um, marketing channels, um, they, they, they need this uh, guidance. So they always um, provide it in the same way because then it's also easier because now like one platform is requesting this, other platform is requesting that. So for them, it would be easier. And also they need something they, they could hang on to and they, they could also, yeah, in an easy way, identify how you can actually provide the sustainability information because yeah, it's it's not trivial. Um, so they, they, they get this guidance and, and support. Um, but I also think that um, for some of the aspects, um, you also need further tools that would make the life of the, of the e-commerce platforms and also of the, um, of the sellers on the platform forms easier. I, I would like to, to give you an example. Um, for instance, um, as or what, what I already mentioned is like to compare um, and verify um, the the labels um, that are displayed. Um, now it's really difficult to do this verification step. An e-commerce platform um, would have to go to each of the um, of the labeling organizations and ask for database extracts and then compare it. And then it's even not working because um, there's no common identifier. So we need more standardization there as well. The ideal way to do this would be to have like an an, a central uh, data hub, which hosts um, the labeling information, like just the most important ones, maybe just the yes or no, if the labeling is, is up to date, it's existing, um, and maybe also some, some attributes of the label, but yeah, just the simple information so that e-commerce platforms and also sellers can check and verify if a label to a certain product is given so that the license holder still obtains the label. Um, and just go to one source, uh, just go to one uh, database. And um, yeah, then I guess like the, the big players can also um, use automated processes for this, um, build an, um, an API and just extract the data and then compare it automatically, yeah, just in time even. And that I think would be a really important uh, first step to, to tackle this issue and to make it actually easier to verify the a part of the sustainability information um, that is given. And um, yeah, how could you do this or how could you achieve this? Um, I think many different platforms are suffering like the, the same problems. So what I think is actually needed is like a, a joint approach, like on a pre-competitive competitive environment and yeah, kind of build the architecture and build the tools together that um, would be needed to yeah, actually provide the sustainability information in an effective way, but also in a reliable way uh, to consumers. Um, and what I would like to also add now, because I, I saw this in, in the questions, um, what, what it means or what, what the guideline, what is the role of the guidelines and how they are implemented. And if there is like a verification process of the, or certification process of the principles that I've presented. Um, so we are not a certifying organization and um, the, the principles that I just presented um, they are published by um, UN Environment and they are voluntary principles. But uh, of course, like this is the like first step for standardizing this information. And um, yeah, it's on a voluntary basis. But of course, the guidelines, particularly the, the general guidelines for providing product sustainability information, um, they should also be the basis for national implementation for policy making, of course. Um, it could also be the basis for developing a national eco-labeling program and uh, so forth. So um, this is not a new label that we want to develop here. Um, it's actually just a, a, a guidance, but an important guidance, I think. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Jan Christian. Uh, I just see, uh, Anish, do you have a moment to, or should we go to some of the questions? I just see that you have a problem with your computer battery. Are you able to, to answer our next question or should we wait a bit? 
Yeah, no, I'm happy to respond. I may just have to switch my location. Uh, so that will be temporary, temporary but I'm, I'm happy to respond, keep responding to the questions, yeah. Okay. No, because um, we have heard now uh, from, uh, from young Christian um, how companies um, could provide information about uh, product sustainability. But now my question to you is, um, are consumers actually generally interested in products that are sustainably sourced and manufactured? Yeah, that's a very interesting and, uh, and, a, and a complex question. Uh, see, sustainability is no longer uh, an option for global businesses. Responsible businesses are moving towards, uh, you know, with a very strategic approach to sustainability, uh, ingraining elements of uh, sustainability into a sort of day to day business, as I mentioned to you about how we are trying to look at it. So I can say that this is uh, this has been steadily increasing over the past uh, past few years or, or, or past uh, decade, if I can say, and I think will continue to uh, be an important topic for consideration in the coming decades. And I think uh, different countries will be at a different sort of, uh, you know, progress, different growth on that uh, on, on that one. Uh, I believe consumers today uh, obviously are more aware about sustainability than ever before and are looking to incorporate, looking for ways to sort of uh, see how these practices can be incorporated into daily life. Uh, consumers, especially millennials, uh, you know, they emphasize on the quality and sustainable uh, sort of a manufacturing of the product. You know, uh, in, uh, we, we actually did a survey with, with 100,000 people, 100,000 consumers on our platform recently during the festival sales. And uh, the overwhelming 85% of them actually said that they would want to buy uh, eco-friendly brands. Uh, you know, uh, industry report also say that 75% millennials uh, are willing to pay a premium uh, for um, environmentally sustainable products, uh, you know, as they are concerned about the environment. You will be surprised before this uh, uh, sort of call, I was talking to my 11-year-old uh, son, and I was asking him about the same question and incidentally, you know, obviously a very young kid. And I said that, listen, if you are buying, your, if you have your PlayStation 5 with $40,000, this is a amount. And if I tell you that, you know, it, it will be $70,000, uh, but it will be fully sustainable. So he was taken aback a little bit early. Say, listen, this is a, a, a huge difference. If it is the same price or maybe, maybe a slight premium, I'm okay, but this amount is too huge. So I'm saying a lot of the consumers will still, I mean, maybe it's a countrywide, it could be different, but I think in India, uh, uh, price will continue to play an important part in the value construct. And, and I think that's what we see. But I think the good part, as I mentioned in my previous response as well, I think uh, as a country, when I look at, you know, we live and breathe resource efficiency throughout our all, all walks of life, slightly different uh, maybe uh, to other countries. Uh, rural, rural communities, which uh, constitute about 70% of our population, uh, you know, uh, live close to nature, continue to live a very simple and frugal life. Uh, India, you know, uh, in by 2021, they had a green green index score of 61.4. So country received very high marks for its housing, transportation and food choices. Uh, people consume local food, uh, you know, they try and uh, buy local products. So I think there are several uh, there are several eco villages in the in, in the country which are practicing sustainable agriculture. So I'm saying there is a lot which is already ingrained as a way of life out here. So I think that's that's something which I thought I'll probably mention it here. So it is very critical for brands and businesses to evolve alongside consumers and you know adopt a very audience friendly strategy involving various stakeholders and their interest. So they need to obviously provide as Jan mentioned. Uh, transparency on the origin and the footprint of the product that will help consumers make a you know, choice which is on uh, you know sustainability choice and and build trust. Uh, so, but I think in uh, you know on all this, uh, a very conscious consumer cannot be you know uh, the role of a conscious consumer cannot be underscored enough. You know, in my view, uh, a conscious consumer is one who is curious. You know, there is a lot of uh, great information that organizations across the board are putting out for the consumers. But the important thing is that ability to distinguish between, uh, you know, uh, uh, as Jen mentioned, greenwashing and authenticity. Uh, and I think the other important role uh, of a conscious consumer is also to spread more awareness. I think that's where, uh, I think that's extremely important piece. Uh, when you get to know about uh, what some company or any organization is doing 
to be more sustainable. It is very important for consumers to guide people in their own circles about how to be more responsible, more environmental friendly, and create that you know, that butterfly effect. You know, at the end of the day, uh, every company relies on the consumers to bring out the best version of themselves. And I think it's very symbiotic relationship. You know, uh, we really want our consumers to keep us, you know, true and bring out the most sustainable version of ourselves. So yeah, I mean, that's sort of a, you know, uh, happy to take uh, additional questions on this. I, I hope it, uh, it, it, it responds to your question. Oh, definitely, definitely. I just, I know you um, have a, another follow-up question for you. I know you, you touched already upon it before, in, actually in your both, both of your answers, but still, um, I would be really interested uh, to hear a bit, you know, how Flipkart is um, is working on, you know, in, including also more favorite, uh, uh, more or less favorite communities. Because I mean, what we tend sometimes here in uh, in 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 the let's say northern uh, world to to if we forget about this is that in, in other places uh, access to internet. Um, but then also access to banking facilities and these kind of things are not um, as easy as as, as we, is here. So how can uh, a company like uh, like Flipkart and e-commerce platform help um, and, and provide also support to these uh, less favored communities so they can also benefit for, from the platform? That That's really a good question. I'm sorry, I, I'm just switch, switching place. I'm just keeping my video off right now. Uh, see, uh, uh, when you look at the India internet uh, or India sort of overall scene, while uh, you know a lot of population live in the hinterland, one of the uh, you would be surprised that there would be uh, close to 800 million smartphones uh, across the country, and I think the telecom revolution in the country, and obviously you know uh, you know we uh, we obviously take pride in the fact that you know as a, as a company we have also been involved in making sure that. Uh, inexpensive smartphones are made available to consumers across the country. And I think that's uh, because uh, content can be accessed by smartphone. It is not just a telecom infrastructure, but also, you know, uh, you know, access to the smartphone. And I think uh, today with that, uh, people are consuming every kind of content in the country, you know, uh, and they are becoming aspirational. Uh, incomes are growing, but they are very value conscious consumers. They want to seek value. And, and as you look at that, there are obviously, I think you, you asked the right question about, is there a financial inclusiveness? Are people using NF cards or digital products on, in a fintech space? So if you look at the last uh, three, four years, the fintech uh, is completely revolutionized. We have a, a fintech arm in India called PhonePay, and they, uh, they are doing billions of transactions using only smartphone, which are linked to the bank. So a linking of the bank to the phone and availability of the content uh, and the connectivity across the country. And I think he's revolutionized, this whole connectivity has revolutionized it. And I think what has also happened, Daniel, is in this one is uh, people are becoming, uh, while they are accessing content of all kinds, they're accessing content primarily in their own language. So one of the innovation that uh, we had to do was, how can I make sure that someone sitting in a small remote location in, in Maharashtra is able to access uh, e-commerce in, 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 in her own language, vernacular language, which is not English. Uh, and there are like, uh, you know, so many languages out in India. So what we did was to make sure that every consumer, every person in the country has access to its own vernacular language uh, app. So our, today our app is available in every single language. Everyone in the country today can have access to the 200 million products at the click of a button in a smartphone. And, and we are able to deliver in every pin code of the country today, which is how we built the infrastructure. Imagine the transformation of a marketplace for a small business who is only supplying a product to a small area. Today, it, uh, the business has an opportunity to go pan India, serve any consumers across the country. And there are digital products and innovation that you can buy now, pay later, or you know, use your smartphone to pay the product or pay on cash when it product comes to you. So you have an option to return it. So a lot of these innovations have helped uh, a very rapid transformation on, 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 on e-commerce. While, as I mentioned in the beginning, it is still very small as compared to uh, overall retail. It's only 5% of the retail, but it is growing. And fortunately, you would be surprised how uh, 
and this is a very relevant question for this group, we are making sure that nobody's left behind. We are also bringing in a small mom and pop store into the fulfillment process. So they remain part of the ecosystem in e-commerce in India. So uh, right from the one who is manufacturing to the fulfillment process and the consumer, everybody is linked together in this ecosystem in a manner which is very, very sustainable over longer term. Uh, and and so, so that's sort of a, I hope that responds to your, uh, 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 the question that you raised. Yes, definitely, uh, Ranish. Uh, very, thank you very much. Um, I mean, I, I have uh, also um, experience with these parallel, um, let's say, paying systems. I, I used to, to work uh, for several years in Africa, and it's amazing how, how this system works. Um, you know, the whole payments um, only through telephone credits. So I think it's, it's, it's really important, I mean, also to give these people that might not have the chance to have to open a, a banking account um, to, to give still access and to be able to, to sell on, on e-commerce platforms. Um, Absolutely. I, um, I have one last question uh, from my side for young Christian. Um, to round up the discussion, and um, uh, I would like to know from you, young Christian, um, what would you say is the best way uh, to, com to, to motivate consumers to buy more sustainable goods on online marketplaces? I think, well, to put it simple, you could like divide it into two consumer types, like those who plan to buy sustainable products so they already have the intention when they log on to an e-commerce platform to find a product that is more sustainable than another um, and then you have those who need to be informed that there are sustainable products um, alternatives available so if you look at um, the first case uh, for the like the already intending um, buyer uh, the buyer who intends to buy sustainable products, then for those, you really have to make it easy for them. So um, develop like um, really well-functioning filter uh, systems um, to provide sufficient uh, information, uh, credible information that the consumers can rely on, that they can check for themselves um, and kind of um, feed uh, the, the information needs that they are having. Um, and this is actually, at the moment, this is not existing. It, it sounds trivial, but um, in many cases, it's not existing. We um, um, observe that this is changing also, um, also among the bigger platforms. Um, they, they will um, ro further roll out their sustainability information um, um, plans. Um, but yeah, still it's, it's not happening. And it, I think this is like really um, an ele elemental thing. Um, for the consumers um, who are, yeah, maybe are aware uh, of sustainability, but not maybe for their own uh, shopping behavior, um, they kind of need maybe a little nudge um, to, to, to get um, informed about um, sustainable product alternatives. Um, but an important thing for, for them is uh, uh, how the data is applied because those e-commerce platforms for them, like also managing data and using the, the user data, for them it's, it's a really an important part of their um, business models. Um, but in terms of uh, sustainability, it can actually be can uh, provide like a or produce like a lock in situation for consumers based on your shopping history. Um, so what would actually be needed is like maybe using the data, but using the data for good. So um, applying the user data, the profile data, um, and use it for something like try something new um, and approach uh, consumers in that way. So that they, for instance, when they do their shopping, they see that there are alternatives uh, available, that they are visible also to them. Also when they, for instance, um, when they look at their shopping history, yeah. that, that they can maybe kind of get a new start there or kind of um, click 
um, that they are also now informed into more sustainable products, maybe, um, or that they kind of get something presented when they kind of observe the products or look at the products um, or at the product lists that like at the right column, you always get presented like an alternative that is more sustainable. Um, and um, of course, um, yeah, use storytelling um, approaches or gamification approaches, yeah, to make it easier for consumers to kind of discover this new product world or this new way of consumption. Because when we talk about um, making the online commerce greener or more sustainable, um, we also talk about um, maybe less consuming in a way where it's also interesting for the for the um, e-commerce platforms. Um, so um, because otherwise, well, for some, it's part of the business model also to kind of announce to consumers to consume less, but it could also be an opportunity maybe to provide further services. Um, let's take an example for instance as an e-commerce platform you're selling shoes you can also have the service to repair shoes and so that the consumer does not need to consume more products but it can yeah, keep its own or her own product and um, the the platform provides a service where you can like send in your shoes and then then you get them back um, in a repaired way um, so that's also about sustainable consumption so let goods last longer or provide the, the consumers also with the information how they can repair and things like that. So that is also an important aspect. And this is an aspect which also can motivate consumers because when consumers are kind of encouraged and empowered to, to kind of use products longer, then for them consumption is also, it, it, it gets another, um, another facet for them and yeah it makes them proud um, also to do something um, with their with their own hands and um, yeah it I think it, it can improve also the loyalty to a brand um, so yeah those are the opportunities I see to motivate consumers to buy more or to to live more sustainably to consume more sustainably and I think like with um, e-commerce you yeah you have particular channels which you don't have in the in the stationary retail. I'm always doing the separation, of course, we're aware that this is also interlinked um, and online, offline, it, it, all, it, it all kind of blurs together. Um, yeah, but just to make it simpler and like to make it, yeah, I think, I hope easier to understand, um, I made, made this distinction. Um, yeah, I think that's that's my my opinion about it. Um, and, uh, yeah, please let me know if you have further questions. Yeah, I guess this is really really also useful for for our um, participants. And I'm I'm really looking forward actually to see um, the the guidelines come to life and also then see how how companies are really actually to to implement them. But I think there is actually going to be um, a question on this for you. But first, uh, I will I will go to to Ranish for a, a last uh, question from uh, from our audience. Um, I will read it out here. Um, has the economic analysis been done? to ask if the logistics, such as the last mile delivery of e-commerce is more or less efficient than uh, traditional retail? Is it possible that the growth of e-commerce actually results in more carbon efficient retail? Yeah, that, that's a good question, uh, uh, Daniela. I think uh, when I look at the growth uh, of small businesses, see, see, I think it's about the scale. If a, if a small business is operating in a small area and uh, uh, and uh, it has an opportunity to go pan India and serve consumers of all kinds, that, then I think the traditional distribution channel is obviously very expensive and largely because uh, infrastructure uh, is, is uh, public infrastructure is slightly limited. Uh, so uh, if you rely on the private infrastructure, then it tends to be uh, expensive. Uh, not just not just the logistics cost, which obviously is a bigger part of the play, uh, but also the marketing cost. So if you if you have a platform which has, for example, I can talk about ourselves uh, in Flipkart, we have almost access to 350 million consumers, 
so so if you are able to design a product uh, which 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 interests consumers across the country then suddenly from a small city you have an access to a billion plus consumers so the opportunity to grow bigger is very very large and the way we have designed and again i think a lot of it is uh, because of the design in the supply chain i think the way we have designed a supply chain makes it uh, extremely competitive much much cheaper as compared to uh, the existing model so uh, while and some of the studies are you know are, are obviously we are working with some of the think tanks in india to make sure that some of the studies are also public because the opportunity to grow business very meaningfully uh, and that's obviously very early part of the uh, the all this sustainability debate because uh, all this debate is extremely important but i think the first one as we are in a very early stage of e-commerce i think creating opportunity for the small businesses is becomes probably one of the bigger uh, bigger priority and i think uh, in that construct uh, the last mile connectivity and when we use small we have done innovation around that how do we bring a small mom and pop store into the fulfillment process so the process becomes dramatically cheaper uh, for uh, for the small businesses if they want to expand so uh, yes i think uh, to, to your question there are studies and there are Uh, these businesses really feel uh, that impact because they find it and i'll send you a video by the way after this i'll drop a link in, in into the chat which shows how a small business is located in a small part of the country uh, and especially leveraging you know what happened in pandemic today grew almost like a 700 times and i think this is uh, more a rule than an exception uh, and largely because it not just grows the market but it's also reduced brings down the overall cost uh, of of doing business in the country Thanks, Anish. This is really. Um, I think this is also really important. Uh, in, in fact, to work on on this uh, last mile delivery. Um, I have one last question for Jan Christian um, from the audience. I think um, Jan, Jan Jan Christian, you already touched upon this question uh, before, but still, um, I will ask you again because I think maybe there is a need of. Um, of clarification <laughs> um the question is do you know any company that has applied the adelphi principles in africa maybe um yan question you could just underline again that it's uh, it's it's not the adelphi principles but the EU, the unf principles thanks Chris. yes yeah we don't own them we just help to develop them <laughs> um yeah so um those are general principles and um so Actually, um, we yeah we we also talked to an um, online retailer um, who is operating in Africa and several regions of Africa, and um, I've also talked to colleagues um, who work on the sustainable entrepreneurship pro uh, program, and um, both of them like mentioned to me that online commerce in the areas where they work is still in its infancy. So they actually um, have to tackle the problems that you have already discussed and um, Banish, that you have also mentioned that are existing, but they are going to be tackled um, already now or in the near future. And I also see that this um, uh, will also happen in, in, in the different um, regions of Africa um, um, because um, I think the e-commerce will also grow in those areas. And I think like really soon, those um, sustainability marketing aspects um, in the e-commerce branch will also come more and more important for them when they have tackled like the logistics problem or the problem of, um, um, of product piracy and so on. Because I think these um, guidelines that we provide, they also help to produce trust with consumers. And trust in e-commerce is like a really important currency. And um, I think that is something where we could tackle this issue. Um, and yeah, because what, what we provide as guidance is not only for uh, sustainability aspects, it's also valid for other aspects. For It's like it, you could also apply them for general information on, on products because yeah, you have to be reliable, you have to provide um, the sources, you have to be transparent. Um, and um, so I think, yeah, it's really, it, it, it really can be an, 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 a good tool to help also um, let e-commerce grow and yeah to help um, establish and maintain the trust 
um, with consumers. Um, and um, I think we're already at the end. So I just wanted to mention quickly. So if you're really um, interested now and you can't wait to uh, until the 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 um, the, um, the guidance is published, you can um, participate in a survey which is still online, where you get like an, an um, a, 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 where you can actually review the the draft of the guidance document. And my colleague um, Johanna, she will post it in the chat right now. Um, Johanna, you have to post it to everyone. I think it's, ah, now it's for everyone, yeah. So you can have a look there at the survey. You can have a look at the draft guidance documents and you can, of course, and we would be really happy if you do that, you can provide comments on that and um, send it to us. I think it will be open at least until the end of the week. Um, and we would be happy to also get your opinion there. And um, yeah, you can also um, yeah, get an impression on the guidelines there. Thanks, Jan Christian. Um, well, I would like to, as we are just running out of time, I would really like to thank both of you, uh, Agnes and Jan Christian, for joining us today and for us for giving us really this valuable insight to your work. Um, I'm also I'm very, very positively surprised about the good work that the Flipkart is doing. So keep it up, especially in also integrating um, communities that are maybe less favored and usually don't have the same um, business, especially business opportunities. Um, uh, thanks a lot for this uh, very important work. And um, I will then uh, give over to I uh, ITC. I don't know if James still wants to say something. Um, and otherwise, I wish everyone a, a very great uh, rest of the day. And uh, yeah, please uh, please check in and and look at uh, our UNF guidelines for the e-commerce. Thanks a lot. Well, thanks very much. Thank you, uh, Rajneesh. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Jan Christian. Thanks, Daniela. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Uh, that's great. Thanks. We'll distribute the information that you shared with us as well uh, after this. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, so, but perhaps over to my colleague, Christina, who will have some uh, explanations about where the session goes from here. Yes, 